Okay, so one of the most common formulas that you will be likely to want to rearrange, especially in science, is formulas for compound measures. Now, the two most common ones um, that I'm going to look at, the first one is to do with speed, distance and time. Now, it's okay to use these triangles as long as you explain to the children why this works. And it only works because there are three variables that have a very special relationship. So if we have a look at this, we've got speed is equal to distance divided by time. So speed is equal to distance divided by time. If I wanted to rearrange this to get distance on its own, distance divided by time is speed, so the opposite of dividing by time is multiplying by time. So if I multiply by time on both sides, because when you rearrange equation you've got to remember to do it to both sides, I'm going to end up with speed times time on this side. And that's going to be equal to distance because that's now cancelled out. So that's your second rearrangement. So speed times time is equal to distance. The third rearrangement is if you want to get time on its own. And at the moment, you can see time has multiplied by speed. So to get it on its own, you're going to divide by speed. So if you divide both sides by speed, this is going to cancel out, leaving me with just time. And distance divided by speed is going to be left on this side. So they are your three rearrangements. So you've got speed, that's distance divided by time. Speed times time is distance. And time is distance divided by speed. Time, distance, and speed. So again, you can use the triangles, but you need to explain this only because of the special relationship between these three variables. Okay, I mentioned earlier that there was another one, and that's going to be density. So that's another common one you might come across. And this works in exactly the same way. So at the moment we say density is mass divided by volume, density is mass divided by volume. If you wanted to get mass on its own, you need to multiply through by volume to get rid of this. So multiplying by volume, and remember to do it on both sides. So this is going to be density multiplied by volume. And on this side, the opposite of dividing is timesing, so that cancels out. So that's going to leave me with mass. So there's my second rearrangement. So density times volume is mass. If you now wanted to get, you've got density on its own, mass on its own, you now want to get volume on its own. You want to get rid of this density. So it's been multiplied by density, so you're going to have to divide by density. Okay, so by dividing by three by density this disappears because it cancels out, which leaves me with volume. And on this side you've got mass divided by density. Which is what it says here, volume is mass divided by density. So there are your three rearrangements. Density is mass divided by volume, density times by volume is mass, and volume is mass divided by density. Again, you can use the triangle, but you must make sure that the pupils understand why it works, because we're now going to look at equations where they won't work. Okay, so for this equation, you can see it's not going to work because it doesn't have the same kind of relationship. So here, before we are going to rearrange them, I first want to look at just solving, so the pupils can understand where it comes from. So this means 2x plus 3 is 15, so x was multiplied by 2, plus 3, and that gives me 15. So solve means work out the value of x. So we're going to have to go backwards, using the inverse operations. So if I multiply by 2, and then added 3 to get 15, the last thing I did was add 3, so now I need to take away 3. And remember, we've got to do it from both sides. So if I take away 3 from this side, that's going to cancel out, leaving me with 2x. And if I take away 3 from this side, I'm going to get 12. I don't want to get x on its own, it's been multiplied by 2, so I'm going to divide by 2, because we're doing the inverse operation. 2x divided by 2, that's going to cancel out, leaving me with just x, and 12 divided by 2 is just 6. And there's the solution to the equation 2x plus 3 equals 15. Now, if I give you another equation that's in exactly the same format, but this time there are no numbers in it. So I've asked you this time to rearrange to make x the subject. So it's the same principle. x has been multiplied by a, then we added b, and we got c. So to get x on its own, we've got to do the inverse operation. So x was multiplied by a, then we added b, so we're going to take away b. So if we take away b from both sides, 
this is going to cancel out. And this is going to leave me with AX equals C take away B. So we don't know what these numbers are, so we just write them as C take away B. We now want to work out what X is, so it's been multiplied by A, so the inverse of that is to divide by A. If I divide by A, this cancels out, leaving me with X, and this is going to leave me with C minus B, all divided by A. And now you've rearranged the formula to make X the subject. OK. Again, here's another equation, but I wanted to show you this one because it's got a fraction in it. Now it's important you understand at what order these happened. So um, if I was going to solve this, I want to work out what x is. So x has been multiplied by 7, then added 3, then that answer was divided by 2 to get 19. So the last thing we did was divide by 2. So the first thing we're going to undo is that, so we're going to times by 2. If I times this side 3 by 2, this cancels out, and it's going to leave me with 7x plus 3. If I multiply this side by 2, 19 times 2, is going to give me 38. I've now got a two-step equation, just like we had before. So this means times by x by 7, then add 3. So the last thing we did was add 3, so we're going to subtract 3. And remember to do it from both sides. So this is now going to cancel out, because it was the inverse operation. So 7x is now 38, take away 3, which is 35. Last thing to do is to get rid of this multiply by 7 by dividing by 7. So therefore, this is going to cancel out, x equals 35 divided by 7, which is equal to 5. Now again, the reason I've shown you this is so you could rearrange the equation in the same format. So when we are rearranging to make x the subject, it's the same as saying get x on its own, um, get x equals, write this in terms of a, b, c and d, um, but you've got to use the same kind of principle. So we want to work out what x would be on its own, so we've still got to work out what happened to it. So this means x was multiplied by a, then we added b, and divided the answer 3 by c to get d. So the last thing that happened was to divide by c, so the opposite of that is to times by c. Okay, so if I times by c, this is going to cancel out, leaving me ax plus b. And d times c is cd. Now you could write dc, but um, convention says that we normally write them in alphabetical order, so we would write cd. We've then got x times by a plus b is equal to cd. So the last thing we did was add b, so we're going to take away b. So if I take away b from this side, it's going to cancel out, because it's an inverse operation, leaving me with ax. And if I take away b from this side, it's cd, take away b. And the last step again is to get x on its own. We've multiplied by a, so we're going to divide by a. So if I divide this 3 by a, this cancels, leaving me with x. And if I divide this 3 by a, I get cd minus b, all divided by a. And that's the final answer to make x the subject. OK, now we're going to look at rearranging some slightly harder equations. This is where the variable that you want to get on its own is on both sides. So again, I'm going to go back to solving equations. If you look at this equation, we've got x on both sides. So if I wanted to solve it and work out what x was, I can't do it at this moment because x is on both sides, so I need to get rid of them from one side. Now, you always get rid of the smallest number of the variable, and in this case, that's minus 3x, because that's smaller than plus 2x. Okay? So in order to get rid of a minus 3x, we're going to plus 3x to both sides. And if I add 3x to this side, that's now disappeared. Okay, so 2x plus 3x gives me 5x, the plus 3 is still there, and I've still got the 7. We've now got a two-step equation, so we need to get x on its own still, so this is times by 5 and add 3, so we're going to take away 3, because that's the last thing that happened. So this now cancels, so we get 5x equals 4. We still want to get x on its own, so we're going to divide by 5, because it's been times by 5 and then we get x equals 4 fifths. Okay. Now you could change that to a decimal if you wanted to. Um, it's important that the pupils realise it's okay to get not a whole answer or a negative. Um, obviously that's possible. Now, if I look at an equation in the same format, I'm going to give you two in the same format to have a look at. Now this one, we've still got the same setup. 
we've got x's on both sides and we want to get x's on one side. So here we've got a minus x and a plus 2x, so it makes sense to put add the x because then it'll have positive 3x. If I was to subtract it from this side, we're going to negatives and that gets a bit tricky to rearrange later. So we're going to add x to both sides. If I add x to this side, I've now got 3x and I've still got a plus b. And this x is now cancelled out, leaving me c. I now want to get rid of this plus b because this means times by 3, then add b. So that was the last thing that happened, so we're going to take it away. And this leaves me with, this cancels out to give me 3x, and this gives me c, take away b. Now the last step is to get x on its own. So this has been times by 3, so we're going to divide by 3. And now we're going to get x equals c minus b, all divided by 3. Now this equation is going to be in exactly the same format, but it's a little bit trickier. And this is because you're going to end up with two parts that are going to have x in them, and you'll see that in a moment. So we start off in the same way, so we still want to get the x's on, on the same side. I don't like having negatives in my answer because it makes it tricky to rearrange, and I want to get x on its own. So I'm going to decide to add dx to both sides so that I've got all these x's on this side. So I'm going to add dx to both sides. This is now going to give me 2x plus b plus dx. And on this side, it's cancelled out, so I'm just left with c. I then want to only have things with x in them. So this b hasn't got any x's in it, so it's a term without x in it. So I'm going to put that over here by subtracting b from both sides. So this is now going to cancel out, leaving me 2x plus dx. And by taking away b, we get c minus b. Now, this is a tricky bit. You've now got only parts, or only variables with x in, but we can't get x on its own without factorising it. So at this stage, x is a common factor of both of these, so we take x out of a factor, because it's in both parts of the expression. 2x divided by x leaves me 2, dx divided by x leaves me d, so that's what's going to be left inside the bracket, and that is still equal to c take away b. Now the last thing here is to get x on its own. So this means x times by 2 plus d. So the opposite of times in by 2 plus d is to divide by 2 plus d. So that leaves me with x on its own, because this is going to cancel out. And we end up with c take away b, all divided by 2 plus d. And there's your final solution. You've now rearranged it to make x the subject.